I've released my first game Dashpong in October 2022, and I've received lots of questions regarding how some of the effects were made. I decided to go through some of the effects to show you how I made them. I won't go into the details of the code, but it should be enough for you to remake them if you want. So let's go. Dominating. An important aspect of the game is the bow. As such, I wanted to emphasize its speed and make it more visible on screen. I did that with multiple effects. The first one is a trail. It gives more presence to the bow, which is quite small, and it makes it even more visible when going really fast as the trail is going to be longer. The bow color will lerp between white and full red, if not touched by any player. Otherwise, it picks the color of the player. Finally, I added particles appearing only when the speed is above a certain threshold. This rewards the player visually when they manage to send the ball really hard. One cool aspect of Dashpong's visuals is how the floor and the border react to the player's presence. Lots of people think it's a shader, but it's actually just lights. On the players and the ball, I set up a light 2D that I put on the light second layer. This is to not see them unless they react with something else. Then I put the border and the hex floor on the same second layer. The borders are made to react with lights only, and thus they'll be revealed when a player or a ball is close to them. It's a simple effect that really makes the map more interesting. Lights in Godot are super useful, and I really recommend looking into them a bit more. They can also be used as masks to create very cool effects. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, the goal effects. In Dashpong, scoring is essential, and I wanted it to be super satisfying. Let me first list everything that's going on, and then we'll see how each of these effects were made. Destroying the ball, the explosion with the light scaling up, the shockwave shader, the screen shake, the background particles gravity, pushing every object on the screen, blinking borders, slowing the time down, the goal sound effects, the cool UI animations with the score, the voice announcement, dominating, scoring spree, etc. When scoring, the first thing I'm doing is destroying the ball. To destroy it, you can just create particles, but I went a bit further and actually triangulate the ball sprite in multiple little triangles that I push away from the goal. For that, I'm using the geometry class. Check out my video on the subject if you're interested. The second biggest thing is the explosion effect itself. The first component is a light 2D scaling from the ball impact position. The light interacts with the floor, the border, and all of the elements on the map, thanks to glow. This gives us a great flash effect and is even more interesting because it's animated. At the same time, a shockwave shader starts from the position of the bow and scales up to follow the light scaling. This deforms the whole screen, helping with the impact of the explosion. Of course, I added screen shake to add even more impact. Because everything is pushed away, I also changed the gravity on the background particles to reflect what's happening on the map. The force is so strong that even the background is affected. Once the shockwave is passed, the borders are blinking using the color of the team who scored. Finally, to tie everything up, I launch a tween to slow down the engine timescale. This allows the player to have more time to see the impact of the goal and it contrasts well with the force of the initial impact. The third thing happening is that every objects present on the terrain are pushed away from the goal. I simply calculate the direction vector between the ball position and each object and use it to apply an opposite force to the objects. This is to emphasize the force of the explosion. At the same time, we have a cool explosion sound effect and the gamepads are vibrating. Finally, we are showing the score with a cool little animation. This moment, I'm also showing a special message depending on what the current score is. Players can dominate, be on scoring spree, spree break, etc. It's also announced with a voice to again emphasize the importance of the goal. Dominating. As you can see, there's a lot going on just for one aspect of the game. But this thing is super important in Dashpong, so it must be shown. If you're interested in juice and want to go further, I have a course for that using Godot 4 on Udemy. Check out the link in the description. Another big component I added later in the game is a dynamic camera. Dashpong started with a fixed one showing the whole map. Initially, it seemed obvious to have it that way, as you need to see everything happening on the map. But let's be honest, a fixed camera is a bit boring. When I tried a more dynamic camera that would zoom in and out and move to follow the action, it made much more sense to me. The important things are always shown as 
as the camera will make sure to adjust its position and zoom. It adds dynamism and help you to be closer to the action. Because the goals are fixed on the maps, I feel like not seeing them all the time is not really a problem because you know where they are. The code for that is super simple. I simply compute the average position of all of the objects of interest, like the players and the ball, and I move the camera to follow this position. For the zoom, you can compute how spread apart the objects are to decide to zoom in or out. The camera stops following the objects once you score, allowing you to see the full map and enjoy all of the effects. Talking about the camera and previously the goal, I also added a replay functionality. I did that because Dashpong has a fast gameplay and it's easy to miss what led to a goal. Because scoring is so important, I thought having the ability to see it again would be really cool. I replay the last 3 seconds and during that, the camera will follow the ball to have a better view of what's happening. I don't know if we can really call that juice, but I think it's participating a lot in making the scoring aspect more enjoyable. If you're interested in that, I made a tutorial on the rewind mechanic of Dashpong, which is the same thing as the replay, but in the other direction regarding time. To finish, I'm gonna go over the little details that don't deserve a whole section for each of them. When you hit the paddle hard enough, I'm spawning particles. Also, the hit sound effect is scaled in volume depending on the strength of the impact. When the players are close to the border, they light it up, and when you collide with them, I also spawn grinding particles. We talked about it in the goal section, but there are particles moving in the background, reacting with lights, making them blink a bit, and of course, they react to the goals. The score indicator has particle when you score, and it also wiggles when you're in a match point to show that you are about to win. The map and border will breathe red during a match point. This emphasizes the importance of the moment. There are probably other things I forgot, and of course, tons of things you could add to make it even juicier. Don't forget to check out my juice course on Udemy, link in the description. Tell me what you think, and which effect is your favorite one in the comments. Thanks for watching, bye!